No situation is permanent and indeed where there is a will, there is a way. Having come from a humble background, Dr. Catherine Nyongesa has braved the waves to become the first traditional oncologist in Kenya and now co-founder Texas Cancer Center. Let's hear her story. Um, my name is Dr. Catherine Nyongesa Wata. I am a cancer specialist or oncologist. Um, I carry many hats. I am um, an entrepreneur, I'm a wife, a mother, and a doctor at the same um, uh, point. So I currently uh, run the Texas Cancer Center with my husband, uh, Samson Water. And I also work in the public sector. I'm uh, the head of the cancer unit at the Kenyatta National Hospital. So I was born and raised in Bungoma County, uh, Western Province. So um, to teenage parents, Mama Elemina and uh, Baba uh, Nyongesa. Um, I'm the firstborn in a family of 10 siblings. So growing up, really ordinary life, went to public schools down in the village, walking to school. Um, uh, even my secondary school, I, I also schooled in um, Bungoma County, Miseko Girls High School. And then from there is when I pursued to go to the University of Nairobi and later did my master's overseas in South Africa. So growing up, uh, really, I uh, used to take lead in taking care of them of my siblings, uh, because we are from humble backgrounds. Uh, my dad dropped out of school in Form 2 to, to, to raise me, and my mom dropped out of Class 5. Uh, so really, it was challenging for teenage parents to raise, to raise me. And then, I mean, things um, developed rather quickly, and they got many more children because they were still young. Um, so up to a number of 10. I think every after one year they were having a child. Um, but I embraced everything and believe that uh, you have to work hard if you have to achieve anything or maybe get out of the situation I was. I thank my mom because she used to encourage me a lot, uh, telling me that um, you need to study so that you're not in my position because she was helpless depending on my dad for any support she was jobless uh, she did not have good education so she, she was such an inspiration to me that uh, i should do better than um, than the situation she was in um, and then um, i also used to to be like the leader in the home uh, among my siblings um, like when I go to school, they expected me to bring good grades home. So they would inspect my reports every time we close school. So I had to prove that indeed I, I was capable of producing good reports. And they were happy for me and they kept on uh, encouraged me. They were my like cheerleaders, uh, the siblings. Um, some of the challenges I went through include like no food. So... We could skip meals. Um, I did not have sanitary pads, so I had um, friends and relatives supporting me. I did not have enough school fees. So also that uh, you'll be surprised when I was in Form 6, actually my classmates forgo <clears throat> their pocket money just to pay for me my school fees or contribute. So I'm very grateful for my classmates for supporting me. Um, they saw this is <clears throat> a bright student, um, not bragging, but I was the best in my <laughs> primary school, O-level, A-level, and I just thank God for giving me that platform to showcase uh, my ability to, to do well. So after I completed my degree at University of Nairobi, I was posted to the counties, actually went to Kakamega Provincial Hospital to work. Um, after I worked, then I needed to go back for masters. And when I came to to Nairobi, I needed like options. I was still confused um, whether I should take pediatrics, to take care of children, or oncology. 
during my medical school years at Nairobi University, my sister actually fell ill with the cancer. Um, and I struggled a lot looking for an oncologist, um, trying to get a place she could get chemotherapy. And that was one of my inspiration. Another inspiration is um, after I completed my undergraduate degree at Nairobi University, my one of the professors told me that, Catherine, I think you should go into the field of oncology. He was an oncologist, so uh, that was the second inspiration. Then further down the line, I've seen that cancer has actually affected even people close to me. Apart from my sister, I've had um, my sister-in-law, my father-in-law getting cancer. So it is um, a field that um, has had a few doctors. Um, during this that time, um, there were no female on, uh, oncologists, especially in the field of radiotherapy. So I was more scared, but I was encouraged. And um, I took up the challenge as the first female uh, radiation oncologist in Kenya. And I would say it has been, I thank God for how far I've gone this far. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not complaining. And um, I think I took the right um, career. The Texas name came up because one of my, my last born child was born in Texas. Yeah. Also my hubby has been working in Texas for a long time and he's the, one of the co-directors of Texas. And the other thing is that the biggest cancer center in the world is in Texas, the MD Anderson. So you always need a role model that when you grow up, what do you want to become? So that encourages me that we hope our Texas will also be, will grow up to be one of the biggest cancer centers in Kenya. There was a time when patients could wait for almost two years to get even on any cancer care like radiotherapy or chemotherapy. So I would say we have, we, Texas has, come in handy to bridge the gap, not fill the whole gap, but at least it's a step forward in trying to bridge the gap and have more patients access timely cancer care. I would say the success story is when my patients get better. Um, I can name, not name all of them, but I know there are some who, who call me 10 years later that, you know, doctor, you treated us, or I get their relative that you treated our family and they are doing well. So that is what keeps me going and it's the biggest success story. Um, there are those who, even if we don't cure them, but we improve the quality of life. Uh, so it's also a success. And I've also mentored many, many young uh, upcoming medics to venture into the field of oncology. When I started, I, I told you I'm the first female oncologist, but now we have a lot of females who have gotten courage that, okay, so we can also get into this field. We have some who have qualified and some in, in training, and I thank God for that, that at least I've been uh, an inspiration to other young women to join this career. Being an entrepreneur is it's tough, uh, with its own challenges, uh, financial, uh, you meet patients who cannot afford care, maybe they don't even have insurance. So those are some of the challenges that I've faced. And um, apart from that, I don't think I regret starting this um, entrepreneurship. It's just that you have to to be consistent um, and you have to put in a lot of hard work and everything is possible. And challenges should not be the, the ones that define your success or say, I regret starting this. I think those challenges just help us to grow and um, into better people and um, maybe find out how you can overcome the challenges to build a better Kenya than the way you left it. I believe in respecting others, big or small, um, I also believe as a doctor, you must be available. Whenever they need you, you should be available. You should be able, which means, you know, you should come to work, you are, you are able to perform the duty, not drunk, you know. 
um, you should show the ability that you, 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 should, you are able to do it. And then you should be dependable. Okay, like a doctor maybe goes overseas, leaves me with their patient. I'll tell them, I will look after your patient and I should do it. I should not cut corners, skiving. Um, should be able to perform the duties as if I'm being watched. Mm -hmm.